Arapahoe Basin was founded in 1946. Back then, the beavers was on all the trail maps, people speed it, and it was really a big part of A Basin. We're lucky that just west of our existing ski area is the beavers and the steep gullies. It's perfectly complementary to what we do here to challenge skiers and to make people better skiers. So you've got the two groomers, we've got Loafer and Davis, really steep, open, windy uh, groomers. They're going to be a lot of fun. It's an iconic piece of terrain, not only for a basin, but for all of Colorado skiing. It's steep, it's exposed, and I think for those who challenge themselves with this, there's a huge reward. Most of the delivery system that's behind me allows us to get explosives into places that we might not be able to get them. Part of the added value of the EDS system is that it allows our staff to work this train not only more safely, but in a manner that lets us open this train quickly to our guests, especially on new snow days. So working with our partners at the Forest Service, we were given allowances to enhance 100-foot swaths within the trees out there. Within those 100-foot swaths, the Forest Service gave us the allowance to take 20% of total tree diameter. We ended up taking quite a bit less than that, more on the average of five to 10%. And we feel good about it. We're having less of an impact. We used a helicopter to fly all the trees out of there. That way, we didn't disturb the soil, the plants on the ground stayed intact. And our construction season's only three or four months long. We had a lot of work to do in a short time. So the first year, which was the summer of 2017, we cut the ski trails, we cut the lift lines, we started doing some of the blading. And the second summer, 2018, we built a chair lift and continued on with some of the other blading work. You know, for the grading work we had to do and to dig all the holes uh, for the lift towers, we used a spider hoe, which is this crazy looking excavator. It's got these wild articulated legs. It allows it to travel through through rugged and rough terrain. A pretty specialized excavator. We really excel at minimal impact. That's a big proponent to this, this project is leave, uh, leave no trace. So this is uh, the right machine for the job. A lot of the other lifts that have been built, you can tell where machines have been up and down and that's where these things really excel is after just a little bit of time, you can't even tell we're in there. Doing all the foundations done, that's about 50% of the project for a chairlift. It's all the foundations, uh, and this one was a little bit particular since we had to uh, dig it all by hand or with a spider hole. A lot of logistics, yes. When you don't have an access by trucks, everything has to be flown. We brought a Super Blackhawk that will be able to place some equipment at 6,000 pounds at almost 12,000 feet. Our role is to pick the pieces up, carry them up, hold them in place while the guys get a bolt or two in. The guy on the hill is either giving hand signals or talking to me on the radio. 10 feet, we'll move it in. Guys get a hold of it, easy down, and you just slowly lower it down. When it touches the concrete, you try to hold it as still as you possibly can so they can spin some nuts down. You bring it in again, 50 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet, and there's two snakes in um, cables basically hanging down. By them pulling, it helps to align the cross arm with the bolt holes. How we are going to unspool the whole rope. We usually start at the top with what we call a straw line. So it's a little cable and then we pull it by hand all the way down onto the shield. We do that on each side and then we join the two by a splice at the top. Then we have a winch at the bottom on one side and then we have the whole rope on the other side where we are going to join that little cable with the bigger cable. And then the winch is going to uh, spool that little cable which is going to pull the big one all the way to the top, around the bowl and back down. Today we're splicing the uh, haul rope on the beaver's lift. Apparently we've pretty much run all the strands in. Uh, right now we're setting up to tuck the, uh, tuck the tails in. There's countless amount of people out here that really put their heart into this, this project. So to be a part of it and to be a part of the family at A Basin is, is huge. On peak days we have the same number of people here, but now they're spread out over 50% more terrain. You know, it feels pretty quiet when you're around here. The ski experience, the quality is, is super high. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring some food. Check out these picnic decks. You get a really different view from over here. You know, I feel really lucky to be part of the Beavers Project. We had a great team, a really big team working on this for several years. And I just feel lucky that I could be part of the group and part of making all these people happy skiing and riding. It's really something beautiful and special out there. And that's the real reward for me is to see these people smiling and excited about skiing at the Basin. You know, what a special place A Basin is.